What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So we're talking about Scream 6 in this video here today and actually talking about Scream 7 slightly. But most of this video will just be me going over who killed who in the latest installment in the long running Scream franchise. So just to kick it off, I do want to address that. I know that Radio Silence has kind of given insight as to who did what in an interview with dead meat recently and i think they said who did what also in some other interviews that have been out there but i'm going to try to go off of this mostly off of what i was assuming when i saw the movie and what i'm still assuming now having seen the movie four times now obviously starting from the top our very first victim well i guess she wasn't actually the first victim but the first victim we see laura is no doubt killed by jason given that we not only see him do it <laughs> he unmasked himself to confirm that he did it uh she's sitting in this bar we know waiting for who she thinks is somebody named reggie ends up being lured into an alley by ghostface who stabs her to death near a dumpster before unmasking himself as jason so jason took care of laura jason and greg his partner who was already dead we saw him getting a little chilly in the refrigerator they were both most likely killed by Detective Bailey, who we know was monitoring them, monitoring them anyway, since he registered the shrine location in their name. Jason goes home, gets a call from someone he believes to be Greg playing around with the ghost face voice. And then after playing a game of hot and cold, Jason is stabbed to death by again, who I assume is Detective Bailey wearing Richie's mask before we get that iconic line about who gives a crap or who gives a F about the movies. And then Bailey also is most likely the person who attacks the gentleman in the bodega. Based on Ghostface's handling of the firearm, that's the biggest indication to me. And Bailey is also the one who took out Dr. Stone. Now, the giveaway for Stone is Sam's mention of an alibi during their sit down at the station, while also acknowledging a record of her session notes are at Stone's place. Then Stone is coincidentally killed. And how convenient is it that Ghostface then does what? Goes out of their way to go into Stone's office and steal the record on Sam Carpenter. Now, the other thing that gives it away to me is the conversation that Bailey has with Kirby about the kill. It's also a little incriminating, so I, I'm sticking I'm sticking to him. It could have been Ethan, but his conversation with, with Kirby also comes off in a way of which he's kind of proud of what he just did. So he definitely had to have been the one who killed Stone. Now, elsewhere in the movie, the fake out on Quinn that was most likely ethan ethan also of course was the one who had to have taken out her friends with benefits i'll call him or her hookup buddy i guess i'll say and i think he is also of course obviously then the one who took out anika but what i think backs this up is bailey admitted that he swapped quinn's body out for a fresh one now while ethan was pretending to kill his sister Bailey was over over somewhere else offing some other person that we never learned about for the record and proceeded to arrive at the crime scene swap out the bodies and faked his sadness as we saw during the movie I just think Bailey doing all of that that would have been a little bit too like I can't necessarily buy it but I can buy that Ethan was the one handling the hookup buddy pretending to fake kill his sister took out Anika or Annika while Bailey was off somewhere taking care of another body and then arrived on scene, swapped out the bodies, and that's what happened. Ethan was the one who did all of that fake out stuff, killed Annika and killed the hookup buddy. Gail's attack, definitely Quinn. Ethan and Bailey we already saw in the park with our survivors while Gail is at her place. Quinn had already faked her death, so that left the door open for her to sneak around now while everyone believes her to be dead. Quinn is also the one who attacked Mindy on the subway, given that we saw Ethan on the subway at the time, which was one of my favorite sequences in the movie, by the way. That subway sequence still, the, the way it plays with your paranoia and the way it was kind of basically having Ghostface teleport as the lights continue to flicker on and off and like really honing in on the fact that it's a literal ghost of a character. I really like that. So that was Quinn. And we know that in the end, Sam kills Quinn and Bailey. Quinn gets the gunshot to the head and Bailey is stabbed through the eye. Kirby is the one who kills Ethan with the same TV that killed Stu Mocker. 
Ethan has his pop-up moment and Kirby pushes the TV on his head. So that is who killed who in Scream 6 to me. If you have other thoughts on this, let me know down in the comment section below. There wasn't much to it because I thought it was pretty straightforward. I also know that, yes, again, Radio Silence, I recognize, might have some contradicting statements to make in their Dead Meat interview. I haven't really watched that in full. Uh, but I will share my thoughts now on this next topic that I want to address. So Melissa Barrera has made it clear who she would like to see play Christina Carpenter in Scream 7. There's been a handful of people that have made their claims of who they would like to see. I actually have gone out of my way to say I now wouldn't mind seeing Charisma Carpenter in the role of Christina Carpenter. Some people have said they wanted to see uh, Sama Hayek. And good news for you guys, Melissa Barrera agrees. This was during an interview she had with Cinepop, I believe. Uh, I put up a tweet about it. I, I clipped a tweet a few days ago about this. She made it clear that she would love to work with Salma Hayek or Salma Hayek and would love to see her brought in to play Christina Carpenter. Me personally, I think that would be a tremendous choice. I think anybody that they end up going with could be a tremendous choice. S some part of me really would prefer to see Salma, but I also wouldn't mind seeing Charisma. But... You know, if I had to pick between the two, I, I, I wouldn't lie. I, I'd pick Selma. <laughs> I would love to just see them interact. And I can completely buy that that is her daughter. I can buy, I can buy that Melissa is her daughter. I can buy that Jenna is her daughter. And I can see her being Christina Carpenter. I would love to see her come in, bring that character to life. We know that Christina was supposed to at one point, I think, be in Scream 5. But her scenes got trimmed out. She wasn't in it at all. She wasn't in Scream 6, even though there were rumors going around that she was going to be in Scream 6. This never came from anyone directly involved with the movie, mind you. But we all, some of us at one point believe that to be true. She didn't appear there. But they set up now more baggage for her. She's cut off her daughters completely. She cut off Sam. She cut off Tara. So going into Scream 7, I would hope we get to meet her finally. And I hope she ties into whatever the grand motive would be this time around. She doesn't have to be somebody who was the killer. Because some people argue that that might be a little bit too obvious. And I wouldn't say I disagree. But what you could probably do is go down the obvious route. But don't give us the obvious person first as the reveal. Do it in a Mickey type of way. Give us the person who is their accomplice or somebody who just has a motive that might be a little bit more original than them and then still reveal the obvious choice i think that can make the execution a lot better instead of you having people say oh that's predictable but i would love to see sama hayek as christina carpenter in scream 7 you guys can let me know what you think about that choice from Melissa barrera down in the comment section below uh do you agree do you disagree is there some other actress you would like to see bring the character to life if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i will have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video